Hey everybody, today we have a couple of beers from our good friend Scott out east. You know him, you love him, he sends us commercial beer and he sends us home brewed beer. So, two of them are on the deck today. We have a Norm Norman, uh, otherwise known as uh, Northern German, Norman uh, Alt. And uh, this beer was made. September 19th, it is October 24th, so it is a little over a month old. It is a keg fill, so we're going to give it a try. I'll pour it aggressively, come to think of it. The keg fills, I know how that works, and also he mentioned their lower carbonation anyway. So we'll give it a taste and a look and uh, go over the recipe quick. You know, it's pretty clear. Um, it's got the alt color. If I hold it up to the light, it gets a little more uh, light, you know, red or whatever. But otherwise, if I hold it like this, it is a nice brown color, which looks basically like I would expect. It smells nice and malty. Um... Yeah, it smells good. It has uh, mostly pills, a little bit of Munich, lesser amounts of Carafa 3, Cara Munich, and a small amount of pale chocolate. So, I don't know what the SRM is on a pale chocolate, or a, I should say Love a Bond, because, um, you know, chocolate would certainly give it some color, but so will this four ounces of Carafa 2. I don't know if I said three, it looks like it's a two. Bitter with Magnum, some Willamette at the end, and WLP036 Dusseldorf yeast. It looks like he did make a starter. Pitched at 66 Fahrenheit, uh, up to 68, got up to 72. Then several days later, he's got 78. Interesting. I wonder if that's uh, trying to warm it up for... Um, the, just finishing out the scrubbing the last little bit. Uh, kegged October 7th. Like I said, it's the 24th, so that's, what, 17 days? I mean, that's really tasty, Scott. Uh, it's clean. No off flavors. Always kind of the first two things to look for. Certainly it's carbonated. I'm not going to ding anybody on the carbonation level, especially if it's a keg fill and you sent it from out east to uh, the Midwest. There's a light, uh, it's a very light amount of a kind of a roasty, lingering uh, uh, effect in the aftertaste, which is not bad at all, and I don't even know if it's inappropriate for this type of beer. I don't know if that's some kind of a result of that small amount of a pale chocolate. This is really nice. I don't remember. You talk a lot about the uh, next one, uh, Black is Beautiful. That's obviously a bigger project, and there's a lot more complexity and involvement in making a bigger beer and a lot more grains. Um, I wonder if you even talk about the alt in this. I don't think you do in some of this email that you scent i would take that to believe that you're fairly happy with this beer um i'm happy with this beer i think it's quite delicious and alt is a unique style because 25 years ago or whenever it was when uh, early 90s when we were just kind of learning about craft beer and beers that weren't these american late american lagers Brown Ale was something that you could come by. I mean, like, Newcastle was around, but even more than that, there were these really small little places that were starting to make a brown ale. Uh, even kind of almost maybe before you would see many, like, pale ales around. And um, this is not what I would think of as that, but it's in that category of a historic beer that is not smacking anybody over the face, but it is uh, different than the most popular style of the world, which is the Pilsner style light lager. It's just a nice historic style that is fun to see that uh, 
people like to make. I mean, I think you'll still see some alts at these tap rooms, um, contemporary breweries. I think. I'm not 100% sure. You guys can chime in on that. Do you guys like to make an alt beer? Is that something you guys make? I, I've made a couple, I think. Uh, so, not something I think of too much, but I like it when I get handed a yummy one to drink. So, thank you on that. I will uh, set this aside and we'll get the next one going and we'll see how that is. Next, we have a dark, big, beautiful beer because black is beautiful and that is what this beer is. And it has a lot of a story behind it, not only in general the initiative of this uh, effort to make this beer and raise awareness of social justice issues, but also Scott's in particular sounds like he had quite a time with making it. He, let's see, could not get roasted barley, so he used carafa too. So it's not going to have the roast character that it would get from the roasted barley. It will get the color. However, this is mine, and um, if you make the, there's a homebrew version recipe, and there's a pro. The homebrew one, I think, has more roast, maybe, than the pro, percentage-wise. And if you make it per spec, I think you'll, you apparently will get a, quite a roasty, dry one. There's a lot of chocolate, there's roast, there's black patent. And uh, so some people are dialing that back a little bit. So Scott actually almost like accidentally and inadvertently sort of did that but by not being able to get the roasted barley. Um, he put coconut into it and he commented that somehow even though he felt like he strained it out maybe there was a hole in the bag or something but some coconut got through it to the package beer so i did use a strainer and i do have a i do have a few pieces of coconut that i caught um and i haven't really i just took a quick sip of the foam and i did was getting coconut uh let's see here how it how it goes mm. I mean, I can smell the coconut. I, it, I'm quite sure I would pick up on that if I did not know that it was there. He comments, it seems too bitter on the end for him. In all fairness, I do believe the beer was said to be more of an American rendition, so it makes sense. So maybe like uh, that might refer to the hop bitterness if it's like an American stout. And there is a lot of hops. I know mine. I have mine right here. Um, no coconut. Uh, that, I forget on mine, I don't know if he has a Cascade, I think it was Chinook and Cascade if I recall. Um, where do we have his hops? Cascade, yeah, I guess I'm just seeing sort of like Cascade. Cold, steep, dark grains, 13 hours. Oh, look at that. I actually haven't read through all of his statistics. Oh, here's another thing though. This was fermented with Opshaug, Opshag, Kvike, Alias, White Labs, WLP 518. Now, that's, uh, and fermented, pitched at 90 degrees, 86 degrees, 76, 74, and it was dying down. So this is a Kvike one, which is interesting because I know Chip Walton did one that way. I can't get over um, bringing the glass to my face, I smell coconut. I taste it. Tell you what, Scott, this thing is not nearly as bitter as I thought it was going to be based on what you were saying. Now, you said you got 1081. I thought you were saying that you had some efficiency problems. Maybe you were going for that 1090 plus, which is the spec. Um, Maybe that's what you're thinking, but you got down to 1016. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Maybe you've got like the goal, and then you have ACH. Maybe that means like actually 1073 to 1025. So that's maybe, I can't see what this says. It's just the handwriting, which you know, we all have our, our own handwriting. It looks like it says TAS, I don't know. Maybe you were aiming for 1081, but you got 1073. That would make sense because you were saying that you didn't get as much as you hoped. Let me take a sip of mine. Mm. 
Mine is more bitter than yours. It's more roasty. I think it has more hot bitterness and it has a more lingering effect of a dry bitterness. And I back sweet mine with some lactose and that'll be in my video. We'll discuss that at more detail. It looks like what you have for the hops is one half ounce at 60, one ounce cascade at 20, another ounce at 10. Um, I think that's less hops than is in the recipe. I think I, gee, I might have to, I'll pause here and go look up mine quick. So mine is an ounce of Chinook at 60, two ounce of Cascade at 20, and two ounce of Cascade at 10. And that is the, what was in the recipe. So I'm curious about that. Unless I'm not seeing this right, it looks like you really dial back on the hops. If I did not know better, I would just think this was like, I don't know, some kind of robust stout, uh, not a milk stout, and not like foreign extra stout, robust porter, but some kind of like stout with uh, coconut. It's, uh, I believe you have it listed as maybe 6.3% alcohol, so whatever kind of category that fits in there. I think it's not at all too bitter for my taste, especially when this one, which I used all of these highly kiln malts, it was so bitter and dry and kind of chalky, roasty that I felt like, oh man, I don't even know if I'm going to want to drink this unless I sweeten it a little bit. And actually the way that it's drinking right now, with, I can taste the lactose, but it's not too much and it just roughs, it roughs, smooths out the rough edges a little bit. But I think yours is quite nice. And because of all this stuff that you were saying about how you weren't really sure about how you thought about it, I was expecting it to be really like a bitter, dry, roasty bomb, and it certainly is not. I think what I'll do is get a, maybe get a fresh cap and recap this and have it, uh, you know, another day, or I might have somebody come over and share it with somebody else. You know, this recipe is interesting. I've had four ones now, including my own. They're all a little bit different. Everyone tweaks it a little bit. Two of them have been Kvike, or maybe even three, to be honest. Um, mine was not, but that's kind of interesting how people are using that type of yeast. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's better than I expected based on what you had led me to believe with what you said. So thanks for sending this. You also sent a couple of commercial beers. I don't know if I'll do video thoughts on those, but um, I'll certainly let you know what I think of them. And um, I think I'll wrap this up now. I might have to run over to Chips to do a quick tasting up there. But thanks for watching. Catch you later.